We interrupt our regularly scheduled programming. Um, I've been going over horror comics all month, but I have to uh, take a break from that just for this video to go over My Time Machine by Carol A. But don't worry, I have a horror video for you later today. And stay tuned and watch this video until the end. And we're back. My name is Taylor of Taylor Talks Comics. And like I said in my preamble there, every day of October show, so far I've shown off a different horror comic or horror comic related topic. Taking a little break from that just for this video because this book comes out this week and I wanted to show it off to you. Don't fret though, my promise that to have 31 days of horror comic content, I'll have a video later today showing off a different horror comic. All right, um, and also I want to thank Tucker Stone and Fantagraphics for sending me out an early review copy of My Time Machine by Carol Lay. This is a really, really great graphic novel. It's Carol Lay's first graphic novel, I guess. Um, in the dedication in the back of this book, she thanks Gary Groth for kind of bugging her um, about when she's going to do a full-length graphic, graphic novel for him. And now she's done it, and I have to say it's a really, really great um, first graphic novel. I hope we see more from Carol Lay. But here's the uh, overall book. It was designed by Carol Lay with C. Huang, of, uh, who's done some other graphic uh, Phanographics book designs. You can see too the uh, lead title lettering there is embossed. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it. And then so is her her name there, and then on the spine as well. That text in the logo it's all embossed. And you can even see it on the imprint on the oh, the cover there. The end papers though are different on front and back. It's just kind of a reverse image of each other. And this is an awesome time travel story that. I, I love time travel and, and stories. Sometimes it can kind of give me a headache because I'm not quite understanding uh, what's going on or the rules or if they're even following the rules. But this book does a great job <clears throat> of all of that. So it's like semi-autobiographical too, which is a fun take on the autobio comic uh, genre where typically you get people day to day, you know, drinking their coffee, talking to their friends. Like the Harvey P. Carr um, style of autobio comic, right? This is a lot different, and it's, I say semi-autobiographical semi because the, I think the characters are real, and uh, their emotions and their messaging and, and things that they feel, uh, think, believe, and feel are all real, but then the story itself obviously is not, because unless Carol Lay is really a time traveler, we don't know, but, <clears throat> um, so we start off with her traveling, and it, you can see the year starts off in 30 million 2020 so it's three million 30 million years into the future of when the story takes place because the story takes place in 2020 um, which is a backdrop for a lot of the things happening in the story if you guys remember how awful 2020 was um it actually takes place right as the pandemic was about to hit in like february 2020 and our political um the political scene in, in America was pretty uh, tumultuous, not unlike today and right now while we're gearing up for another uh, election. <clears throat> and Carol and her ex-husband, Rob, are uh, frequently talking about how they feel about the world and things going on and with climate change, with um, President uh, Donald Trump, which they never name him by name, but he's obviously who they're referring to. And uh, and then COVID and the pandemic and those kinds of things. Um, but I do say ex-husband, they've maintained a friendship. And it seems like a very deep, uh, very like true friendship. Um, they don't really go into the details of, of how that happened, which I don't, I don't actually hate because it's kind of like real life. Like if you, if you met an uh, ex-husband and ex-wife <clears throat> in real life and saw that they were friends, you want to get every detail of the story of how that happened and, and that kind of thing. So it's kind of like you're... Um, on the outside looking in kind of thing. So it's just very natural. Like this, the story and the dialogue and the friendships and relationships between Carol and, and Rob and, and also um, her cat and like these things, it's all very natural. Like it all seems very realistic um, and just like written really well. So Carol is stuck in 30 million years into the future. And you could, I love, um, I have to say overall, as far as like art goes, like, this is, like, the most, like, most of what the art's going to look like on most pages. But then 
when there's certain scenes where she needs to go outside of that, like you see this really fun lettering of her like yelling, which goes outside of the very like structured, like rectangular caption boxes or very, um, what is that? Hexagonal or uh, do, 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 hexagonal <laughs> uh, talk, speech balloons. And this lettering right here to where she's like yelling and whatnot. Um, there's just so many cool things about that. So like if you just flip through this book in, in a bookstore, you might only see this kind of artwork where it looks kind of like, uh, like, I don't know. I don't even know if she works digitally. I, I, it looks like it's digital art to me. If Carol is watching this, she can correct me in the comments by all means. I want to, I would like to know how she makes this, but then you get to these scenes where she really like starts to stretch her artistic muscles. Um, and you can see like an atomic bomb going off, uh, the time traveler turning into a skeleton. And then right here, because that takes place in here as well. That's a big part of this, the HG Wells, um, time traveler story. Or time machine story. I'm sorry, um, where they're kind kind of uh, talking about it as like a documentary, as like a real thing that happened, um, where like she's like looking at H.G. Wells' book that he wrote, and then also talking about the time traveler that um, went on these excursions and how they could do them better, or do them differently, or mimic what they did, and that kind of thing. And it's actually the uh, the impetus of how the their time machine gets built is that she finds the plans for the time machine because they found it. They, it says right here, fell into my hands in a roundabout way. And then she explains how, how her uncle Clint won them in a poker game. So then Rob is a scientist and he's really smart. So he's going to build the time machine out of um, what he knows about science and things. And it becomes kind of an obsessive uh, journey for him to create. So they talk a lot about the laws and physics about how time travel can work or cannot work. Um, and Carol at, at first is showing interest. Here's some more time traveler scenes, which again, showing the artistic muscle of Carol Lay to have like all this different range is amazing. Um, but, uh, Carol at first is like, well, maybe I can go back in time and kill Hitler, or maybe I can go back in time and fix this thing. And Rob's explaining how like that won't work. And that could affect, um, a lot of other things. You see all references to other things too. Like they talk about the Twilight Zone episode where the physicist goes back in time to kill Hitler, they talk about the TARDIS from Doctor Who. So a lot of those fictional aspects of time travel are speculated on by Carol and Rob in here as well, which is fun for the reader, especially if you've um, consumed that kind of media as well, that you can um, enjoy it and, and kind of have your own speculation about it as you're reading this. Uh, but also, it's not a requirement to have consumed that media. Like, they never talk about it in a way that you're going to be lost. Like, what is he even talking about? Like, who what is Doctor Who and who is Twilight Zone kind of thing. Like, it, that, you don't need that to be explained to you. They kind of explain enough of it as characters through the natural dialogue to uh, keep you abreast of the situation. So, and here's 2020. She's about to go off into her adventure. And one of the things that they go they realize is that through all of the time travel, you have these hallucinations while you're traveling through time, which, again, just is an opportunity for Carol Lee to really stretch her artistic muscles and show you what she can, what she's capable of. And her first stop is in 2035, um, where she's encountering a near future, uh, 15 years into the future, where she meets Rob and how things have gone kind of to hell already. And um, you can see they're wearing masks because this is post-pandemic, but the pandemic has gotten so bad that wearing masks regularly is a necessity for everybody. And this is Rob's... Um, new wife mara who is a doctor <clears throat> and then so they realize that that's not all they want to explore so she goes a little bit further into the future and then a little bit further into the future until something goes wrong and she ends up going 30 million years into the future and that's where i i, I want to stop you know any to prevent any sort of spoilers or things um i just wanted to kind of give you that launching pad to uh explain everything and i don't want to uh spoil the whole package for you and how it th how things end um but really really fun story like i said it's semi-autobiographical so it has like that fun nature to it to where it's like these are very real people real characters that carol a has a great voice for um but it's very science fiction it's a science fiction story with semi-autobiographical characters i guess i should say uh, but a really fun read it clocks in about 160 pages and it will be on sale this week, and it's twenty four ninety nine from Fantagraphics. Uh, I highly recommend it. I think it's a great story that I hope that a lot of people get their eyeballs on, and and we can see 
uh, more praise and things for it as the, f the next few months go on and proceed. Uh, but thank you for guys for watching. Again, my name is Taylor Talks Comics. I'll have your horror comic um, review later today. Uh, so don't so subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And then also subscribe if you're into horror comics because you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos as we gear up towards the end of October. Um, and then as I prepare content for November and December. Thank you guys so much and keep talking comics.